its new members. And uh, perhaps Todd could uh, say a little bit about yourself and then have Chris do the same. Thanks, Dory. This is Todd, Todd Garner. Um, some of you know me. I'm an architect here in the city of Des Moines um, with substance architecture um, and been practicing architecture since the early 90s and a resident of Des Moines most of my life. Um, it's an honor to be a part of the board. I previously was on the Urban Design Review Board for several for several years and look forward to seeing what this is all about. So thank you. Great. And Chris? Yeah, Chris Draper. I'm a professional engineer with uh, Mead, which is a consultancy located here in town. We do a lot of work in uh, sustainable design operation, uh, a lot of work in transportation management plans, uh, lead energy star and that type of work, uh, typically in commercial properties. Um, so thanks for the ability to be included. Great, well, welcome. Uh, now I will um, read the rules and procedures for our meeting. The Plan and Zoning Commission is generally an advisory body to the City Council. The City Council will hold a public hearing and make the final decision on all matters before the Commission, other than site plans and subdivision plats, unless denials or conditional approvals thereof are appealed. Please contact the City Clerk or Development Services Department staff at 515-689-9485 for details on council hearings. Applicants will be given 10 minutes to present the request. If applicants wish to share materials not already submitted with the application, please email them to planning at dmgov.org so a staff host may be able to share them on the screen when you present. Proponents and then opponents from the public are then allowed to speak in that order with each speaker allowed a maximum of five minutes. Staff has attempted to compile a list of people who would like to speak on each item. Staff will first call on these people and then will open it up to anyone else who wishes to speak. To request to speak during the hearing, please use the raise hand function on Zoom webinar via the internet or dial star nine on your phone. Once permission to speak is given, to unmute and mute, dial star six on your phone. You will be required to give your legal name and address for the record prior to speaking. Also, we ask that you keep your microphones and phones on mute unless you've been given the chance to address the commission by the chair. Applicant is then allowed five minutes for a rebuttal if any opponent spoke. All comments are to be germane to the item under consideration and speakers are to maintain a courteous manner. The hearing will then be closed and the commission will discuss and vote on the issue. Items listed on the consent portion of the agenda will not be individually discussed and will be considered for approval in accordance with the recommendation in the staff report unless an individual present or a member of the commission requests that the item be removed from the consent agenda and considered separately under the public hearing agenda. The City of Des Moines is pleased to provide accommodations to individuals or groups with disabilities and encourages participation in city government. Please know that typical accommodations may be limited by emergency requirements as issued by the state of Iowa and the city of Des Moines. Now we'll have a roll call for this evening. Okay, here we go. Rocky Spazato. Yes. Will Page. Here. Johnny Alcivar. Johnny, you're muted. I'm going to move forward. Dory Bryles. Here. Emily Webb. Here. Jan Freed.
Jan Freed. Going to move forward. Kayla Berkson. Here. Steve Wallace. Here. Carolyn Jennison. Here. Francis Bogus. Here. Chris Draper. Here. Todd Garner. Here. Johnny Alcivar. Here. Can you hear me? I can. Thank you. Jan Freed. I see Jan, but I'm not hearing Jan. Moving forward, Lisa Howard. Greg Wadier and Abby Chunga. Thank you. Hey, just one more try. Jan, are you able to mute yourself and confirm that you're participating? If, if you're having technical difficulties, uh, please feel free to e email or text me and let me know. Otherwise, we'll. Chair Bryles, we'll, ha uh, we'll have to just move forward and assume that she's not here until we can confirm that. Okay, thank you, Jason. Uh, could uh, we have a motion for approval of the minutes from the June 17th meeting? This is Emily Webb, I'll move. Thank you, Emily. Rocky Spazzato. Yes. Will Page. Abstain. Johnny Alcivar. Yes. Dory Bryles. Yes. Emily Webb. Yes. Jan Freed. Still not able to hear you, Jan. Moving forward, Kayla Berkson. Yes. Steve Wallace? Yes. Carolyn Jennison? Yes. Francis Bogus? Yes. Abby Chungus? Chris Draper? Abstain. Todd Garner? Abstain. I'm going to try Jan Freed one more time. Still not hearing you, Jan. Lisa Howard. Greg Wadier. Thank you. Thank you, Glory. Um, I will proceed uh, reading through the consent public hearing items, and we have quite a few this evening. There are 10 that went out on the agenda. Item number one is a request from James Hunter and Connie Conrad Hunter to designate Snooky's neon sign at 1810 Beaver Avenue as a local landmark. Is there anyone in the public present who would wish to pull this item from the consent and hear this item this evening? If not, are there any members of the commission? Just a reminder, if you're in the audience, use the raise hand function or star nine on your phone. I don't see any hands. Okay, thank you. We'll proceed on to item number two, request from Greater Des Moines Habitat for Humanity for review and approval of a public hearing site plan for a type two design alternatives for property located at 926 Kirkwood Avenue to allow construction of a House B building with a 120 square foot shed in place of a garage. Is there anyone from the public who would like to have this item pulled and heard during the public uh, uh, hearing portion of the agenda? Raise your hand or press star nine on your phone. Not seeing any. Okay, are uh, any commissioners wish to have the item pulled? 
Okay, then item two remains on consent. Item three is a request from Scott Bogdansky and Whitney Poston Bogdansky for a type two design alternative for property located at 1510 47th Street to allow construction of a, a detached garage in the rear yard that would be within two feet of the north side property line. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to have this item pulled from consent? Raise your hand or press star nine on your phone. No hands. Anyone on the commission wish to have this item pulled? If not, we'll move on to item number four. It's a request from High V Inc. for review and approval of a site plan, High V Isles Online Des Moines number four for a type two design alternative for property at 4605 Fleur Drive to allow a 970 square foot drive through canopy addition on the north interior side facade where it is only allowed on the rear facade in a CX mixed use district. Is there anyone from the public that would wish to have this item pulled and heard this evening? Please raise your hand or press star nine. Anyone on the commission? If not, we'll move on to item number five. It's a request from, I think it's Bay. As to whether requested rezoning is in conformance with the plan DSM creating our tomorrow comprehensive plan and to rezone the property from MX3 mixed use district to RX2 mixed use district to allow development of additional multiple household living dwellings where the structure would contain dwelling units on the ground level. Is there anyone from the public that would wish to have this item pulled and listened to uh, individually in the public hearing? Please use the raise hand function or star nine on your phone. Not seeing any hands, Chair. Okay, anyone on the commission that would like to have the item pulled? Okay, item number five remains on consent. Item number six is a request from KG Store 543 regarding property generally located at 1619 Ingersoll Avenue and 1620 High Street. A small portion of the property is owned by the City of Des Moines. It's vacation of Linden Street from 17th Street to Ingersoll Avenue and 16th Street from Ingersoll Avenue to the southern line of the vacated East-West Alley between 15th Street and 16th Street. B, determination as to whether the requested rezoning is in conformance with the plan DSM, creating our tomorrow comprehensive plan. And C, rezone the property in the vicinity of the 1619 Ingersoll Avenue from DX2 Downtown District to MX2 Mixed Use District and property at 1620 High Street from RX1 Mixed Use District to MX2 Mixed Use District to allow reuse of the property at 555 17th Street for a microbrewery with additional commercial uses. Does anyone from the public wish to have this item pulled from the consent agenda and heard individually this evening? I do okay. see a raise, a raise hand, Chair, so we'll have to pull that one. Okay. That will be off consent. Item number seven is a request from Oakview Terrace for a site plan Oakview Terrace for type two design alternatives for property located at 3201 30th Street to make various site improvements. A is allow an on-site surface parking lot within the front yard of a flat building type where it is only allowed within a rear yard. 
B, waive the requirement to underground existing overhead utility lines. Is there anyone from the public that would wish to have this item pulled and heard this evening? Raise your hand or press star nine on your phone. Not seeing any. Okay, any uh, commissioners, would you like to have this item pulled? Okay, we'll continue on to item number eight, which is a request from John Washburn for type two design alternatives for property located at 2809 38th Street to allow construction of a house C building type within an N4 neighborhood district with an attached garage at the front of the building within an interior side access door. A, allow parking within the front of a building where it is only allowed within a basement or in the rear of the ground story. Any members of the public who wish to have this item pulled from the consent agenda and heard in the uh, public portion of the agenda? Not seeing any hands. Okay, any commissioners wish to have the item pulled and heard this evening? Okay, we'll go on then to item number nine, which is a request from 4005 Grand LLC for site plan Oak Crest Townhomes for type two design alternatives for property at 4005 Grand Avenue to allow construction of a six unit household living row building fronting Grand Avenue to the south and a two unit household living row building fronting 40th Street to the east. And there's a, a B, which is to allow a street side yard setback for the six unit household living dwelling of 17 feet less than the calculated 41 foot average required. C, allow the two unit household living dwelling to be one unit in width less than the minimum required three units in width. And D, allow the proposed building entrances of the six unit household living dwelling on the south primary frontage to be up to 7.5 feet more than the maximum 4.5 feet above public sidewalk. Is there anyone from the public that wishes to have item nine pulled from the consent agenda? If not, any members of the commission? Okay, item number nine stays on consent agenda. Item number 10 is a request from spot five for review and approval of a site plan at 515 28th Street for property at 515 28th Street to allow renovation of the existing building with waiver of the requirement to underground existing overhead utility lines. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to have the item pulled from consent and heard this evening? <clears throat> Raise your hand or press star nine on your phone. If not, uh, is there anyone on the commission that would like to have the item pulled? Okay, so we're done reading through the consent agenda. Item number six uh, will be pulled. Um, before we have a vote on the consent agenda, we have two more items uh, that could possibly move to consent if it's the wish of the commission. Item number 11 and item 12. Item 11 is a request from 3524 Sixth Avenue for review and approval of a site plan Highland Apartments for a type two design alternative for property at 3524 Sixth Avenue to allow for renovation of the existing mixed use commercial and residential building and related site improvements with a waiver of undergrounding the existing overhead utility lines. 
Is there anyone from the public who wishes to have this item remain on the public hearing agenda and be discussed this evening? Please raise your hand or press star nine. And if not, do we have any commissioners who wish to have the item remain on the public hearing? Okay. Item number 12 is a request from 3523 Sixth Avenue for a site plan Euclid Avenue State Bank, again for a type two design alternative for property at 3517 and 3523 Sixth Avenue to waive the requirement to underground all electric phone, cable, television, and transmission system lines. Anyone from the public who wishes this to remain on the public hearing agenda and discuss this evening? And if not, uh, does anyone on the commission wish it to remain on the public hearing agenda? Okay, is there anyone who, who would move uh, item, make a motion to move item number 11 and 12 to the consent agenda? Francis Bog is so moved. Thank you, Francis. So now we will have items one through 12 for consent, except for item number six which will be moved to the public agenda. Is there a motion to approve this consent agenda? This is Will Page, I move the consent agenda. Thank you, Will. Uh, Chair, before we do the roll call vote on that, I I, I do see that on the um, attendee side we have Jan uh, something listed as Jan Freed's phone. It, Jan, are you able to yeah. speak? Okay. Yeah, I can. Yeah, I can. I could not hear through my computer for some reason, but I connected by phone, and yes, I could vote. Yeah. Okay. To make sure to Thank minimize you. risk of losing you, I'm going to go ahead and leave you on the attendee side of the the layout okay. instead of moving your phone to the panelist. Hopefully that just keeps okay, working. So we'll you. let you mute and unmute yourself that way. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Sorry, Thanks. Jason. I was just getting to that. I've been working with Jan to get that taken care of. Apologies. Oh, thank you very much. Yep. Okay. We can tap now um, take roll on the Appro approval, approval of the consent, yeah. Yes, thank you. I'm sorry, I'm filling in and I'm I'm a little rusty at this. So we'll go ahead and start with Johnny Alcivar. Yes. Emily Webb. Yes. Dory Bryles. Yes. Jan Freed. Yes. Kayla Berkson. Yes. Lisa Howard. Steve Wallace? Yes. Carolyn Jennison? Yes. Francis Bogus? Yes. Greg Wadier? Yes. Thank you. Chris Draper? Yes. Abby Chungus? Rocky Spazzato? Yes. Will Page? Yes. Todd Garner? Yes. Thank you. What was the, the final count on the vote? Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. 12-0? 13. 13. I counted, sorry. right? Is that right? We have, yep. Great. Thank you, Glory. Uh, now uh, we'll have the public portion of our agenda, and this will involve items number six number 13 and number 14. I will quickly uh, 
State item six again, it's a request from KG store 543 for property located at 1619 Ingersoll Avenue and 1620 High Street. Chair, members of the commission, Jason Van Essen with the city's planning staff. I'll go ahead and run through the presentation. There's really, you can see on the slide here, there's, you know, it's listed as parts A, B, and C. Um, part A is a vacation, a right of way request, and part B and C are related to a rezoning request. It's all part of kind of a single project um, but I, I do want to just clarify that we really have two two things going on here we have a rezoning request and we have a right-of-way vacation request this map identifies the parcels that are proposed to be rezoned um, you can see the bulk of the site that's intended to be redeveloped with the brewery use is already zoned mx2 uh, there are a uh, parcel here that's part of the site the rx zone rx1 and then some city on land down here that's DX2 that would be assembled uh, to move the project forward. Those need to be rezoned to MX2. <clears throat> Just some photographs that kind of correlate to the rezoning aspect. Uh, we are not reviewing a site plan today, but we do have kind of a concept for the brewery use. Um, you can see the how the land to be vacated, excuse me, not vacated, I'll cover that in a minute, but to be rezoned uh, would be incorporated into the site. Uh, this initial phase with the site plan does include uh, the Linden Street, part, part of the Linden Street that's part of the part A, the request. Just a graphic kind of showing those two uh, rezoned areas. Now, this is a larger concept that shows um, Linden Street going away in the future and part of 16th Street that will be vacated, uh, be incorporated into the site with some future buildings and a couple existing buildings remaining. Aerial identifying the right of way that's proposed for vacation, uh, Linden Street, and then kind of the southern terminus of what was a East-West Alley uh, as the northern boundary of the 16th Street uh, vacation. Uh, these, this alley has been vacated and sold. Uh, applicant owns owns the uh, the alleys. Uh, I know this segment was vacated in 1979. I think this one was around the same era. I just don't off the top of my head. I don't recall. You can see in the subject or in this block to the west of 16th Street, there's no alley network. Just a couple photographs, this is 16th Street, looking south, looking north, Linden Street. Copy of the staff report, this would have been included in the commission's packet. I'll flip through. Uh, in short, we are recommending approval. Um, we did have a condition on the vacation that easements for any existing utilities be retained or be provided until such time they're abandoned or relocated at the applicant's expense. <laughs> This is the notice map for the rezoning. So again, parts of the site proposed to be rezoned. And you can see the boundary of what we notify. Couple of comment cards and support. This is the notice map and response map for the vacation. See, we do have uh, one property owner in opposition that's uh, north of where we're talking about today of vacating. And just anytime you'd like me to flip back through uh, any cards, we always do have also any emails we've received. Um, emails have both come from representatives of the, the property that I highlighted there in that corner. Also included, if we need to reference it, we have the copy of the information that Kraus um, sent out to do their neighborhood outreach um, that was provided to us. I'm not going to go through it all, um, here. but certainly if we need to reference it, we can. With that, I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions the commission might have for staff.
Uh, if you have no questions for Jason, uh, we could have the applicant's presentation. Um, I don't know, John, I think I think might be here to represent um, the applicants. Or if there's somebody else here on behalf that's going to speak, please use the raise hand function and then we'll go ahead and unmute you. All right, John, if you want to, there you go. Go ahead and give us your name and address for the record. Hi, everyone. This is John Witte uh, with Krauss Plus. Um, the address is 1459 Grand Avenue, Des Moines, Iowa, 50309. Um, and just presentation-wise, I uh, agreed with, with everything Jason presented, did a great job. Um, I think we're happy with the recommendation the city is making and would welcome any feedback. Is there anyone else present who would like to speak in support of this request? If not, are there any speakers present who would like to speak in opposition to this request? Please use the raise hand function or star nine on your phone. Go ahead and unmute yourself, Pat, and give us your uh, name and address for the record. Uh, my name is Pat Monroe. Um, 5530 Northwest Beaver Drive, Suite 100, Johnston, Iowa, 50131. I am part of the uh, ownership uh, at 1540 High Street, which is at the corner of 16th and High Street on the, oh, what would be the southeast corner of that. Um, 16th Street's what's getting vacated and Linden Street are getting vacated. Um, first of all, that Krauss letter that you showed a little bit ago, I, I, I never received that. Being the, the building that's directly involved in the um, vacation of 16th Street and Linden Street, um, I would have found it um, necessary for the Krauss group um, the architects, civil engineers in charge of this project or, the, or city planners to contact us because we're a direct, uh, this directly affects the value of our building by use. Um, basically traffic patterns, we, we really have not been told what's going on here. Uh, the, only, the only thing we've gotten from the Krauss group was a uh, third party uh, realtor that tried to buy our building and basically kept us in the dark about the master plan and what they were doing here. Um, really, my, my concern here is that we just have not been given the information as the direct and probably the single most damning piece of property um, affected by the vacating of 16th and Linden. I have no problem with the other two, the B and C, by the way. Those are, I think it's going to be a great project. We just like to have more information, at least be told what they're going to do and how it directly affects us before the commission recommends us to city council. It does have a direct impact on us. Um, we have not, we, this is important enough to us that we'd like to have some conversation with the Krauss group on what their intent is, how it affects us, a little more detail on what, what this does to the area. Um, I think we need, we deserve that consideration. Um, we have not had that from uh, the Krauss group. Our recommendation is that you table this until we have our conversation, um, whether we should move forward or not. That's what we're asking. That's all we're asking. Somebody tell us what's going on before you recommend it to city council or to the to city. Uh, thank you, Pat. Is there anyone else uh, present who wishes to speak in opposition? You have five minutes.
Not seeing any additional hands. Okay. Uh, so at this time, are there any other people present who uh, would like to speak there neutral to the request? Not seeing any hands. Okay, thank you, Jason. Um, Commissioners, do you have any questions for oh, Stitt? We do, uh, do need to offer a rebuttal for the applicant. They get oh. five minutes. Okay, I was gonna see if they had, okay. Uh, applicant, uh, you have five minutes uh, to for some closing statements and to address the concerns that were expressed by the speaker in opposition. This is John Witte again. Um, Pat, thank you for the feedback. We, we appreciate you taking action in the in the process um i would say that our the, the broker that did approach you was our is our broker and is our agent and um I, I think we would we would dispute the characterization that no information has been shared with uh the ownership group at 1540 high street uh site plans were provided through the broker acting as our agent um and I would I would say discussions of deeper uh, information were shared with the uh, with the ownership group at 1540 High Street. So um, I would say we're we're a little surprised to hear that uh, they are they are not aware of either the the plan or what we are uh, requesting of the city. Um, we part of our request was to make sure that access to the 1540 um, High Street location was not encumbered in any way. They still have access through their uh, through their parking lot and with their easement in the alley behind uh, to get to all parts of their property. So I think we we took that in mind when we uh, took this action and, and applied for this. So um, happy to answer any questions from the commission, and uh, I'll I'll leave it there. Thanks. Thank you. Commissioners, do you have any questions for uh, city staff or the applicant at this time? If not, we will close the public hearing and uh, open it up for the commission uh, to deliberate. Well, Dory, this is Greg Watier. I need to recuse myself on this item. Okay, thank you, Greg. Is there any uh, members of the commission, uh, what your thoughts are on this item? Can I, this is Chris Draper. Can I ask one question? I, do, do we have evidence that the information that was said to have been delivered was delivered? Is that a question for staff, or do we need to see it um, yeah, for the applicant? Sure yeah, I mean, is that something staff can answer? I mean, do we know that the letter was delivered, or or do we? The well, we sent notice. We provided the applicant our notification list um, that would have included the property. I don't have, um, you know, like a um, cert, It's not certified mail. The I did ask the applicant to provide some detail on their communication with the neighbor because I was concerned that there hadn't been correspondence. And at, at this point, they've provided me with the what's been mentioned, maybe in a little more gr greater detail. Um, so at this point, the best information I have is that there has been correspondence. I, I think the other thing I'd point out is that it, I think that from what's in front of you, there's nothing that's impacting their property from my perspective. Um, they currently don't have access to 16th Street except for through a, a property that's privately held. Thank you. Madam Chair, this is Rocky. I'll move staff. Thank you, Rocky. Is there any... Um... Further uh, discussion before we take a vote? Did 
someone try to speak there or if there is no further discussion uh we'll go ahead and take a vote excuse me okay we have a motion on the floor to approve staff uh, we'll take a vote emily webb yes dory briles yes Jan Freed. Yes. Kayla Berkson. Yes. Lisa Howard. Steve Wallace. Yes. Carolyn Jennison. Yes. Francis Bogus. Yes. Greg Wadier, I have as recused. Chris Draper. Yes. Abby Chungus. Rocky Spazzato? Yes. Will Page? Yes. Johnny Asavar? Yes. Todd Garner? Yes. Motion carries 12. One recused. 12-0-1. 12-0-1. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Glory. Uh, we'll now move on to item number 13 on the public hearing. This is a request from JAPA uh, for regarding property generally located at 1661 County Line Road. The property is owned by the Des Moines Metro Wastewater Reclamation Authority, City of Des Moines. And it's for a determination as to whether requested rezoning is in conformance with Plan DSM and B, to amend the plan DSM tomorrow plan to revise the future land use designation from business park to neighborhood mixed use and medium density residential. C, rezone property from EX mixed use district to RX1 mixed use district and NXT neighborhood mixed district to allow redevelopment of the site for a Joppa village for 50 units of household living use and professional office use as a transitional transitional housing community. And Jason's presenting. Thank you, Chair. Jason Van Essen with the planning staff. This is an aerial identifying the subject property, highlighting the rezoned areas. Um, the site would have a component that would need uh, RX and then the kind of surrounding area would be would need to be rezoned to NX1. Then uh, as far as amending the future land use map uh, to reflect the needed zoning, um, these are this shows kind of that outline with the medium density of residential and the neighborhood mixed use. It is good to, you know, when we look at these um, when we provide these initial maps here, we you know have to zoom in so you can kind of see detail, but then we lose sight of kind of what's around it in the greater area. So I did want to show this map to show that there is to the south uh, on the future land use map designation for low medium density residential, and that there is residential uh, to the north. So there are other uh, residential and kind of mixed use um, classifications in the area if you pull out even further. Um, so it's uh, not exclusively the business park designation. Some just images showing site. This is a concept. Uh, we are not reviewing the site plan or design tonight. This is purely just a question of putting zoning on the ground and allowing the process to move forward after the facts and all those details come later. But it is good to know kind of the concept uh, we do have a presentation this the applicants put together that I will flip through the slides uh, when they speak uh, to help them out. So I'll, I'm going to save any description of the project uh, to them. Staff report was in uh, in your packet, provided all the analysis. 
uh, including uh, our discussion on Plan DSM, the city's comprehensive plan, and an overview of the different designations and our logic for supporting an amendment to the future land use map, and then the logic for um, rezoning the site. We are recommending approval. Uh, this is the response map. Uh, within the notice area, you can see we didn't get any responses. We did get um, a card that came in that was outside of the notice area. And then we had a couple of emails from uh, neighborhood associations uh, in opposition, uh, but they are not part of the notice map. This email is from, let's see. I think this one is maybe um, from an individual expressing concern. And then, let me scroll through. I know we have one from, oh, here we go, Fort Des Moines. Um, and then this one is from the Watcher South na neighborhood as well. Oops. Extra slide. So anyway, sorry, a little rough landing there, but uh, I'm happy to answer any questions you might have for staff. Uh, Jason, this is Will Page here. Uh, there's, uh, would you explain what this, uh, is this a nationally organized, recognized organization, JOPA? Is it something that's local? Is it something that's regional? Could you tell us a little bit about the organization that's sponsored? Sure. This? Well, there's, um, you know, a lo local group that's working on this project. You know, I I, I feel like I'd be doing them a disservice if I if I kind of give a muddled overview. I know the uh, applicant is here. There's representation here that's going to go through a presentation. I think they might spend a little time kind of talking on the concept and who they are. So, if I could, well, if you don't mind, I wouldn't mind just passing over them so they could do a better job than I will. Uh, that makes good sense. Thanks. Yep. If there are no other questions at this time, uh, we could hear from the applicant. Please state your name and address, and you have 10 minutes. Okay, very good. Thank you, Jason. Uh, and uh, it's an honor to be here in front of the commission tonight. My name is Kurt Carlson, and I am the housing program manager for JAPA. Um, the address that I need to give you is 2326 Euclid Avenue, zip code 50310. Uh, JAPA is a, is a local nonprofit organization that's been around Des Moines for 12 years. Uh, our mission is to end homelessness in central Iowa. Uh, JAPA does an awful lot to help people that are in need. So um, I, my time is really short. I would love to spend more time sharing the JAPA story with you that maybe we could do that some other time um, if you reach out to me individually. Uh, the property that we're interested in, Jason did a nice job of summarizing where it's at. Uh, key for everyone here is you can see Fleur Drive and you can see County Line Road. At the lower left side of the, the screen, that's the Casey's that you uh, are probably familiar with as you come off of Highway 5. Uh, it's uh, an 18-acre parcel, and as Jason mentioned, it's uh, the Des Moines Metro Wastewater Reclaim Authority that owns this. Uh, this was a decommissioned um, wastewater treatment facility, and it, it really has sat unused for close to 30 years. Next slide. But we're excited at the opportunity to, to put it into use. Uh, I, I brought this slide up to show you that within the 18 acre property, we're really only focusing on the 13 acres that are shown in green here. Uh, this is an area that's fenced off. Um, it's what was the, the original uh, wastewater treatment facility. You can see the lagoon that's on there, and you can also see from the elevation marks that it's a fairly steep property with a creek that runs through it. Um, noteworthy is the property south of here is in a floodplain, so there's not likely to be a, a much development on the south side. As Jason showed you, our focus is gonna be on the western half. Next slide, please. Okay, and here's a slide that Jason already showed you. What we want to do is, is have a section that is RX zoned, and that will be for two main buildings, 
Um, at this point in time, we're anticipating each building would be approximately 4,000 square feet, and it would support the community that we're trying to build. And X2 would be the area where the housing would be located. Okay, next slide. As far as neighborhood outreach, there, there's only 10 neighbors, as Jason noted. Uh, we received no emails and no phone response. Uh, that's uh, the neighborhood outreach though is a journey. So we envision this to be a very active part of our project going forward. Um, we do want to reach out to the neighborhood association. Uh, Travis Schuput that had the first uh, uh, dissenting email uh, was someone that we had an hour conference call with this afternoon. He's the treasurer of the Watrous South neighborhood. And we are planning on being at the Watrous South neighborhood meeting uh, next Tuesday. They have quarterly meetings. so. Uh, Next Tuesday is the soonest we could get in. Uh, we understand the Fort Des Moines neighborhood further to the east also has some concerns. We look forward to working with them. Uh, it's been Joppa's practice as we've done development in other parts of Des Moines, such as Cheatham Park, uh, to very actively get involved with the neighborhood meetings and, the, and work with the neighborhood uh, leadership. Okay, next slide. What's worth noting is that we've got a lot of extremely professional, extremely capable partners. Uh, this, for me, this is a brag slide. We're working with some incredibly good partners that will make a very successful development here. Um, I think you'll recognize some, some leaders within our community here. Okay, next slide. And Joppa has been working on this, this village concept for oh, close to seven years. Um, what we did last year differently was we got a we put together a village coalition. Uh, you can see again we've got some uh, really important leaders in our community that have been guiding our efforts. As we've looked at properties, we've we've explored 38 different properties in the last uh, nine months, and this is the one property that seemed to be the the most likely to be successful for what we're trying to do. Um, I. I can't thank these folks enough. They've really done a, uh, an outstanding job of guiding our efforts. Okay, and, and just conceptual, uh, quick view. I, I, uh, you can see the, the homes that we're planning on building. These will be individual homes. Um, this is uh, designed by BSP and BSB Design, uh, leading architect in the country. And BSB has also designed the, the main and community buildings that you'll see. So conceptually, these are created, uh, these are gonna be refined and we'll be reviewing these with future site plans and future detailed design reviews. Uh, we're planning a prototype of this home uh, in the fall. Less than 10 minutes. <laughs> Thank you, Kurt. Is there anyone else present this evening who wishes to uh, speak in support of this request? Excuse me, Meryl, go ahead and unmute yourself. Thank you. Um, did someone else want to speak or? You you raised your hand first, so go ahead and okay, rock on. Give us your name, your name and address, Carol, if you will. Sure, Carol Maher, seven hundred one Polk Boulevard, Des Moines, Iowa, five hundred three one two. Um, I had the opportunity to uh, try to ride my bike to this location um, because, as many people on this call know, I'm a pain in the um, arse when it comes to having um, low places be accessible by bicycle and i couldn't get there from here i got as far as i don't know army post and southwest 14th or something and uh there was it was like a super highway in several directions and there were no sidewalks and so today i was in my car and i drove down there and i did get to this site and discovered that um it's a gravel road and there's no sidewalk um there it's really out in the middle of bfe which is which is great to put something that's probably not on the tax rolls and that's another question i have is it going to go on the tax rolls but 
My concern is these folks um, most likely won't have a car. And how are they going to get uh, back to civilization from this location? Um, I, I don't know how close DART is. I'm having a trouble with their website. But on my bike, I, I was afraid. And um, I try not to be when I ride my bike. I, I was afraid to, tr to, to cross the roads to get there and to walk along the highways to get to this location. Highway is uh, in, you know, it wasn't a highway, but it was really fast roads. So I guess I'm all for reducing homelessness. Rock on, that's, that's a goal everybody should have. But I, my concern is that, is it in the middle of, of a location that is so distant from the rest of the city that, you know, you can't get to a job, you, you can't get to services. It sounds like you're building services on site, which is great. But, you know, are, are all those pieces going to come together like a paved road and sidewalks and things like that? So that's my observation. And thanks for your commitment. Thank you, Carol. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak in support of the request? Linda, if you want to unmute yourself. Hi, my name is Linda Lair, and I live at 3801 Southwest 28th Street in South Des Moines. And I'm very much in favor of this project. I've worked with Joppa for a year and a half, and I've been impressed by their ability to be flexible and to identify the needs of their clients and make the necessary changes. And that's just what I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Anyone else in the audience who wishes to speak in support of the request? We have a Brianne Buckley. Yes, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. I'm uh, Brennan Buckley. <laughs> I apologize. Uh, no, no worries. Um, live at 3712 Blue Stem Road in Norwalk, Iowa. Um, I actually just mapped it and um, we will live just less than one and a half miles directly from this facility. Um, I'm also have been in real estate my entire career. I'm the former president of Iowa Realty. I'm in favor of this project. Um, uh, first of all, as a Joppa volunteer and, and getting to know what they do and how they do it. Um, it's it's an organization that any city in America would be proud to have the, the focus, the dedication and how they go about their business. I just happened to be um, in Portland and Seattle last week and uh, observed firsthand what some of the challenges that they're having with their homeless population. And, you know, talking to some of the folks there, I think they feel that they wish they would have done things when they were smaller communities um, to, to get ahead of this and address it. I, I fear that those situations are probably a little bit, uh, I wouldn't say out of control, but certainly harder to wrangle. Des Moines is of a size, uh, I believe, that um, we can embrace and, and solve these challenges and serve the mission of, of Joppa to end homelessness in central Iowa. That's not an opportunity that will be uh, very easy to attain um, when we're a city of 1.1, 1.3, 1.5 1 million. So um, I, I feel that we're at a point as a metro where we can get ahead of this thing and do some really amazing work and and uh, provide an alternative and a transition for, for these folks in need. So I'm in support. Thank you, Brennan. Does anybody else wish to speak in support of the request this evening? Raise your hand or press star nine on your phone. You I'm not seeing any more hands, Chair. Okay. Uh, are there any people present who wish to speak in opposition to the request? Please raise your hand or press star nine. Go ahead and uh, unmute yourself and inter introduce yourself there, Travis. Travis Schupert, 5419 Southwest 19th Street here on the south side. Um, I'm not necessarily in opposition. As I as uh, the gentleman speaking earlier today, I had, ha I have had the opportunity to speak with them in depth with their, 
all their leadership. And I'll tell you what, they are fantastic people. Their mission is right. Uh, but I just want to reiterate, cause I sent a second email this afternoon, you know, uh, kind of, you know, remaining somewhat neutral, as long as the access to the area, you know, uh, the per first person who spoke, uh, as long as those concerns are addressed and, you know, it doesn't put too much of a strain on our the city services, such as police and fire and what have you, you know, I, I, I don't really see a problem with this moving forward, but those were basically my concerns. We do have a lot of issues down here on the South side. I just, you know, my biggest concern earlier today was can the South side truly support another community such as this with all the services that we currently have down here on the South side. That's all I got. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Travis. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak in opposition to the request? Uh, uh, Mitch, if you wanna go ahead and unmute yourself and give us your name and address. Uh, did I get unmuted? Yes. Okay, it's Mitch Harris. I'm with the Watcher South Neighborhood Association. Um, the association is box 35845 in Des Moines. And I just wanted to also echo what Travis had to say, uh, who is also a member of our board. Um, we really don't have enough information at this point, and that's why we were opposed to it. Um, uh, I will be visiting with the JAPA folks and getting them on our agenda for our meeting on the 20th so they can address membership and um, let us know what's going on. And, it's very possible that we may change our minds, but um, before we hear anything, that's why we posed it. And so I'm wondering if it could also be tabled uh, until your next meeting, until after we've had a chance to visit with these folks. So we're open to listen. We'd love to hear about it. That's it. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience this evening who wishes to speak in opposition to the project? Raise your hand or press star nine on your phone. Jason, do you have somebody who is going to be? I am. I, I'm sorry. I was jotting a note. I'm not seeing any other hands. So um, unless, I mean, the, the applicant has the rebuttal opportunity and if there's any questions. Okay, that'd be great. Uh, so as the applicant, you have five minutes for uh, to address the comments that were made. Okay. Um, this is Kurt again. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, very good. Well, uh, thank you for hearing this tonight. Uh, uh, we appreciate the involvement of, uh, of everyone in this really important project. Uh, there were a couple of points made. Uh, we know that we need to more effectively communicate with the neighborhood associations, and we look forward to getting out and meeting with the neighborhood associations. And, and we recognize that's not just one meeting and done, that's multiple meetings, and that's really engaging in the community. And um, you know, we're looking for more than approval. We're looking for acceptance. Uh, we're looking for this uh, community to be community to be embraced by um, the uh, the neighborhoods. I, we think it offers some really good opportunities long term for volunteering. the The bike friendly comment was uh, was noteworthy. Uh, Certainly, we've uh, we've already had some discussions on sidewalks and bicycle access, and we've studied the uh, the Dart routes at length. And we we are meeting with the leadership at Dart, you know, on long range plans. So, recognizing that the clients that we have will need effective transportation. Um, just to to reiterate, this is a, an old wastewater treatment facility that's been unused for thirty years. Uh, I think we're excited that this facility can actually be put back into use. I think we have a very good use for it. It's a, it's a very pastoral setting. And uh, we'll find that uh, it, while it, it has limited business value, it, it's going to have excellent value for building communities and helping people. And, and lastly, I would just urge the commission to 
consider moving this forward, recognizing that there's more reviews. We've got site plans. We've got detailed design reviews to make. Uh, the city council will get to weigh in on this. So uh, there's a lot more reviews ahead of us, a lot and quite a few more disclosures. Uh, this is all helping us build a facility and our core business is helping people. So I would urge you to help move this forward so that we can move forward with helping people. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you. So at this point, uh, we'll close the public hearing. Uh, and does anyone on the commission wish to make any comments or ask questions? Madam Chair, this is Greg uh, Watier. Um, can I ask the applicant a question? Sure. Um, would the applicant, uh, everyone I've heard speak, uh, seems to be in support of the mission, and myself personally, I am as well. Would the applicant consider uh, tabling this till the next meeting of, of this board or a couple out, just to have the opportunity to engage a little bit with the community and basically make a good case for why this is a good location. I'd really like to see it go to a vote tonight, uh, you know, re respectfully considering your request. Um, it, I, I think that there are plenty of reviews ahead, as I mentioned, and I think there are a lot of opportunities to get more and more engagement. This is kind of our first step. Um, we do have a lot of people in need, as everyone sees, uh, and I think it's been even noted in this meeting. Uh, you know, the faster we move forward, the, the sooner we'll be able to help people in need. Madam Chair, this is Rocky. Hi, Rocky. Uh, you know, I just, I love organizations that are willing to take action and, and try to be impactful in our community, making it a better community. And, and uh, so I have no problem moving staff here and taking action tonight. Okay, hey, Rocky, uh, there is a motion on uh, put forth. Is there any further discussion from commissioners? Can I ask, what, this is Chris Draper, may I ask one question? Uh, Ms. Uh, Mayor asked about the status of uh, tax rolls once the project was going. Did, did it, was there an answer to her question on that part? Will this be revenue producing or is this a nonprofit and it won't, you know, how, how does that, how do the finances of it work? Sure. I, you know, as staff, I can, um, you know, it's a nonprofit organization. I'm not aware that there'd be any revenue, but I don't know. We could, if you would like Kurt to speak to that, if they have any sort of, you know, in theory, it could be created, uh, you know, uh, or ownership structure could be created that works with the nonprofit that would be tax generating, but I, I am not a part of any of those discussions. So it, I, I know normally we don't, open it back up to ask the applicant again after the it's been closed, but we might do that in this case. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, JAPA is a nonprofit organization, but we do pay taxes on properties in other parts of the city. So I, I think at this point, we would need to take an action item to explore the options on that one. Any other discussion from the commission? Yeah, can you please, this is Greg Watsi again, can you please put up staff recommendation on the screen so I can see it one more time, since that's the motion? Yeah, just, well, it's for approval. Uh, let okay. me find it here. Okay, yep. thank you. Oh, there it was. Thank you. Yep. So this is J Dory. Oh, Jason, I'm this, this, I'm sorry, Dory. Jason, this is Rocky. So are we, are we, are we taking vote on this uh, A, B, and C separately? Or are we voting on it as a whole? This well, is people staff. This is Judy Parks. The way the motion was made, um, Rocky, um, it would be all of them, uh, all parts together. If you would like to break these into separate ones, um, you could withdraw your original motion and then take it. Nope, nope. Okay. All at one is good. All at one is okay. good. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Certainly. 
Thanks, Judy. You're welcome. So if there's no further discussion, uh, we'll call the vote. Johnny Alcivar? Yes. Emily Webb? Yes. Dory Bryles? Yes. Jan Freed? We may have lost Jan. Oh, are you there, Jan? I think she might be trying to talk because a second ago, yeah. well, now she muted her phone. So uh, come back to her. Thank you. Kayla Berkson. Yes. Lisa Howard. Steve Wallace. Yes. Carolyn Jennison. Yes. Francis Bogus. Did Francis leave us? He had, had about an hour, so he might have left already. Okay, thank you. Greg Wadier. Yes. Chris Draper. Yes. Abby Chungus. Rocky Spazzato. Yes. Will Page? Yes. Todd Garner? Yes. Going back to Jan Freed. Jan, it looks like you're trying to talk, but I cannot hear you. Can you raise your hand if it's yes? Okay, perfect. I got a raised hand. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're making do with what we have tonight. That's right. Technology. Yeah. Thank you. So I have 12 motion carries. Thank you. We, uh, we have one final item on the agenda this evening. Number 14, which is a request from Iowa Fireworks Company for review and approval of a site plan Iowa Fireworks Company Type 2 design alternative for property at 1820 East Army Post Road to allow a proposed on-site surface parking lot within the front yard of the proposed workshop warehouse building where it is only allowed within a rear yard or interior side yard in an I-1 industrial district. Chair, members of the commission, Jason Van Essen with the city's planning staff. Ariel identifying the subject property on the north side of uh, East Army Post Road. Uh, this is generally to the east of Southeast 14th Street intersection. Existing building uh, to be removed, site to be redeveloped. Site plan, uh, you can see the footprint of the building. So north is this direction with Army Post to the south. Uh, Layout includes parking in the front, drive access, loading to, on the rear. Landscape sheet, kind of flipping the orientation with north at the top, south of, uh, south of the bottom, our post. In essence, tonight our discussion really is on the location of this parking. Uh, chapter 135 indicates that parking should be to the side of the building. Um, so the building would scoot forward and parking could be provided along the side of it. The applicant does own property to the, a large amount of property to the, would be the east. Let me go back. So all this land is commonly held. Goals of chapter 135 earlier really to push buildings towards the street, create that urban environment. Also promote dense density in terms of development patterns, a density of value, higher use, utilization of land. Uh, this is uh, elevations of the building. Provided a copy of the staff report in your packet uh, sent in advance of the meeting. Uh, as always, we include the criteria that we're supposed to consider when 
reviewing type two design alternative requests as this is. Um, as I've mentioned, we really had nothing uh, that we could see as staff that we didn't think could be overcome uh, with, with the standpoint of having the building move forward and providing parking, uh, particularly with knowing that there's additional land available um, if it was even necessary. So we are recommending denial of the request. Uh, we are recommending approval of the public hearing site plan. Uh, we don't. This isn't a circumstance where we want the site plan completely denied. We do want you to take action to approve that. But the type two design alternative to allow the parking in the front, we are recommending uh, denial of that. Notice map. And happy to answer any questions you might have for staff. Jason, this is Rocky. Has, has this came in front of us before? Have we seen this before? Do you remember? I don't think this individual proposal has. Um, okay. We've seen projects over time on this site, and I think there was a, a neighboring property, maybe a door or two down, that wasn't too long ago. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Hey, sorry, this is Chris Draper. Is there a building currently there that's going to be repurposed, or is everything being torn down and being built? Um, I believe they're uh, tearing down and starting fresh. My understanding. Any Jason, other? This is Johnny Alcivar. Um Do we have any new development down on this uh, part of town that has followed the pattern that we're looking for that to follow? I believe we had... Um, and I can, during the applicant's presentation, uh, look at this a little closer, but I believe we had a proposal. I'm not 100% sure that's constructed yet, but it was a property to the east of here, maybe a, a parcel or two over, um, that I uh, was going to comply from what my recollection is. I, I can dig into that a little bit further if you'd like me to. <clears throat> Thank you. Yep. If there are no more questions for Jason, we will hear from the applicant and you have uh, 10 minutes. Please state your name and address. Justin, go ahead and uh, unmute yourself and give us your name and address. Thank you, Jason. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, my name is Justin Dalton with the Dalton Law Firm, 2521 128th Street in Urbandale, Iowa. I'll be speaking on behalf of the owner. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. Jason, can you go back to the, your, uh, I think it's your tab 14 that's got the site plan on it, and go to page four of nine. Yeah, right. Uh, go ahead, go to four. Go to four. No, back up. Here's is a different sequence. I might go back to where you were on that page. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right there is fine. So, uh, as Jason, thank you for the, the presentation. That sums it up very accurately. Essentially, the only issue before the commission tonight is the placement of the parking lot. Uh, and, and we've essentially worked through all the other staff uh, concerns through this entire project. Um, the primary reason we're asking for the the alternative is because there are specific site features that do create conditions that, that make strict compliance impractical or undesirable. And essentially, if you look at this lot, when we came in and we, we acquired the initial parcel that this is on, we, we essentially had a basic threshold for the size of the building that we wanted to put there. Uh, after we, we recognized from city council that they approved the zoning for this because they wanted us to remove that dilapidated building that's currently there, we came up with what essentially a minimal viable building would be on this very narrow lot. And then as we moved to the design iterations through, we recognized that in order to meet the stormwater detention uh, requirements, the property would be too small. So that's why we actually reached out to the neighbor, acquired that lot um, at, a, at a cost that we had hoped to avoid from the outset. But our plan with that neighboring uh, parcel is actually to break it off and sell it at some point. So that really has no uh, release valve to us to solve this parking lot issue. It was essentially we bought it because we knew we needed the water to drain to the back. We needed stormwater detention in the back and we needed a rear access for loading docks. And so now if you look at this, uh, this lot in order to shift parking to the side, it's going to, it's going to create a, a whole bunch of problems for us. 
Uh, and those, those are the issues I guess I, I wanna highlight for uh, the commission tonight. Um, from our perspective, it's, it's quite natural that the parking would need to stay up front. Um, the, the, the main concern we have is if we move parking to the side, we're gonna create a, a, a serious congestion point. Our heavy traffic will be going to the rear. At the same time, we're gonna have retail traffic. The, the applicant has a unique selling season. Uh, as, as many of you know, fireworks in Iowa are only lawful for a very short window to be sold. Uh, and so inside that window, you're gonna have compressed retail traffic and compressed truck traffic in that same area. And, and that is from a public health and safety standpoint, something we would really like to avoid. Uh, one thing that is interesting um, from a city uh, fire code and, and building code perspective, you, you might intuitively think, well, fireworks should be a high hazard classification. And, and we are meeting those uh, standards, but for, for whatever reason, the code does create a niche uh, for fireworks that there isn't a normal setback. And, and in other words, in most cases, if fireworks were treated as a, this H3 higher classification, you would require setbacks all the way around the building because you want easy access for fire emergency response. So our proposal kind of uh, would, would solve two things, leave the parking up front. So if, if you ever do have an urgent event, you've got easy access, you essentially are meeting an, a normal higher threshold for emergency responders to have quick access on all three sides of this building. And then also like a, I've indicated, we would avoid those congestion points. Um, I think a, another thing that we've, we've considered here is essentially this has no adverse effect on any of the neighbors. Uh, it's, it's very consistent with basically the industrial uh, neighbor uh, parcels that are around it. Most of them all have front parking. You have a self-storage unit to the west, and then on down the street, you've got modular home construction and other heavy industrial users. So there wouldn't be anything about the front parking here that would would create any uh, denigration in, in any of the neighboring parcels. Um, so I, I guess from our perspective, what we're, what we're considering here is other than the fact that there's an urban design requirement that would want more of a pedestrian focus uh, for, for the frontage as opposed to an auto-centric focus. The other factors that you can weigh in this thing all tilt towards put the storage up front. And so one of the other considerations the commission can, can weigh tonight is, are, are we mitigating whatever that pedestrian-centric you know, access point across the front would be? And, and our answer on that is, is yes, because we, we're gonna have the same bike track storage and, and uh, pedestrian access through sidewalks on the frontage. But it's essentially, if we didn't have this one issue of a, a narrow um, lot to deal with, I, I really don't even think this would be an issue for us, but because of the nature of this lot and the fact that the adjacent par parcel, although we own it, has no, has no way to solve this, this predicament, we're, we're respectfully asking the council or the commission to award us our, our request for a type two design alternative here. Um, I, I do have, as part of the applicant, um, Jeremiah is also, um, one of the owner's uh, representatives that if I happen to miss anything there, he might want to chime in. But essentially, Jason, those are the, the main points we wanted to raise. And again, um, ask the, uh, the commission to, to approve the design alternative allowing parking up front. Thank you, Justin. Is there anyone else present who would like to uh, speak in favor of the request? Raise your hand or press star nine on your phone. Okay, if this, there's no this is Jeremiah, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Uh, yes, this is Jeremiah and I'm uh, the owner of the property. Uh, related to Chris Draper's question, I wanted to just clarify the the building that is on the property now would go and we have a demolition permit in and it's uh, uh, an old building that the surrounding neighbors have indicated is an eyesore and the neighborhood association is excited about us taking some interest and in really improving the property. I would also note that the new building that we are planning to construct is um, a, sm a little bit smaller square footage than the existing. So we are actually downsizing the building that's on that lot. And also the, the parking and the rear configurations are pretty similar to how the lot is currently.
So Jeremiah, is that, are you done with your remarks? Yes. Okay, thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in support of the request? If not, uh, are there any members of the public present who would like to speak in opposition to the request? Please raise your hand or press star nine on your phone. Hi, Carol Maher again, 701 Polk Boulevard, Des Moines, 50312. Um, the first presenter indicated that there was sidewalk access to this parcel. I'm, I don't think that's true um, because I was uh, looking for them today when I, when I drove to the location. Um, and Army Post is really an unfriendly pedestrian or bicycle route. I think it's great you're having two bike racks, but um, I think it's really going to be hard to ride a bike there until the city makes a commitment to um, putting in sidewalks along Army Post. Um, the um, Easter Lake Trail goes to like, or Indianola or one of those goes to like a half a mile to um, that you could get to a, a bike on, but that half mile is pretty treacherous that doesn't have any support for um, active transportation. So uh, um, that's my comment on that. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak in opposition to the request? If there are no other speakers, uh, applicant, you have five minutes to make any closing statements or to address any of the uh, comments or concerns that were raised. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, I, I think the uh, caller who objected raises a, a very valid point. There is no uh, other uh, spine of part of uh, sidewalk to connect this to, which which kind of plays into the the argument we're making that that even if we do put the parking lot to the to the rear, there's nowhere that this is 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 going to. And I recognize you know city staff has to start somewhere, um, and so I I think that her point is a valid one that there it's not like this would be the one sticking out that doesn't fit inside a a corridor of of pedestrian. Uh, access and it's just the nature of, of this industrial strip. Um, and in terms of the bike racks, I mean, obviously that's just a reference to the, the city requiring what it's it's going to require of this space and and our willingness to cooperate with it. I, I have no further comments. Thank you. Thank you. We will now close the public hearing, uh, and the commission uh, will have time for deliberation. I'm sorry, this is Chris Draper. If this is something that's known, is there a reason that the building needs to be as wide as it is, or is there an opportunity to narrow the building to actually reuse the same square footage in this space, given the narrowness of the lot? Or is there a reason that that reconfiguration, since this is gonna be a new build anyway, hasn't been considered? Justin, if you want to go ahead and unmute yourself. Can you hear me, Jason? Yes. Yeah, thank you. And that, that question, um, it, the, the, the answer to that is, we've already looked at the minimum design where it would achieve our operational goals. And we're working with a um, fire protection engineer out of Omaha to basically maximum, there's a whole bunch of different standards that apply between the retail space of, of a, a mixed building like this, where you're gonna have uh, warehouse storage and retail space. And as we've worked through all these details with him, this is essentially the, the most compact space that we can get in the exact configuration with this lot 
that keeps everything viable. Once we start skinning it up and moving it forward, then we, what ends up happening is you break up that front facade of all that glass. It triggers a whole bunch of different design requirements from the standpoint of sprinkled glass to uh, more fire resistant uh, glazed glass. There's, uh, we, we went through the standards on how many vertical breaks you can have, how many horizontal breaks you can have. And essentially what ends up happening is aside from the internal breaks between retail and, and um, warehouse space, that we're dealing with, we also, you know, your costs just start going up. One of, one of the other big challenges we ran into with this with this particular lot, aside from the stormwater de detention problems that we had to acquire the neighboring parcel for to get access to the back, is there, there's there's poor water flow or, or lower water f uh, volume and pressure down there than we had anticipated. So we're doing all kinds of creator creative fire design um, standards to to, to achieve. Uh, the safety thresholds we want, and and it all fits into the same puzzle. And so when we've explored, can we break this? Can we skinny it up? It it really becomes so impractical. It's just not. It's it's almost not worth it. So um, that's kind of a long explanation to the to the simple question. But that's it's really what we ran into is if we if we end up pushing that parking around, it just shifts so many other factors and raises our costs even more. I mean, if you look at the elevation, uh, Jason, if you can pull back the building elevations. If you were to do a side-by-side -side comparison of what's out there on this facility right now, an old dilapidated metal pole building that's just a, a gross eyesore compared to what we're trying to achieve here. I mean, our goal with this, this space is to design it nice enough that if, you know, if our uses ever end or, or the market dynamics change, this, this site will be a very attractive one to, to anybody else to come into it. And hopefully it will spur the same type of quality development around it. Um, and so as we've done that, <laughs> our costs just keep going up. As we as we try to achieve all these different design criteria, and then now if we were to have to deal with re reconfiguring and skinning it up, it just it it makes it almost uh, unviable anymore. So there's there's the, the 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 core reason why we're pursuing the the parking in the front. And and again, from our perspective, it's we're trying to balance out the totality of all these factors. And and really, the only thing that the city would be essentially compromising on is an urban design standard that. Um, for this particular neighborhood and this area of industrial design maybe doesn't really have uh, the, the same weight that all these other factors we've talked about, um, at least from the applicant's perspective. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Jason, for pulling that up. No further comments. Uh, Laura, uh, Dory, this is Will Page here. May I ask a question of the applicant as well, please? Certainly. Uh, Justin, I'm looking at the landscape plan for the uh, for the site. Could you talk a little bit about that and explain to us how the uh, the, the the landscaping will tend to break the massing of the building or to break the massing of the the, the surface, the plain surface of the parking lot, so that we have a different view of the building in terms of the parking lot being masked some uh, somewhat. Would you t address that for me, please? Yes, Jason, are you able to hear me again? Yes. Okay, th uh, thank you for the question. That, that's a very valid point. I mean, our, our first goal on this was to make a, a building that was attractive enough that uh, it, it doesn't need a lot of screening. Um, and then the second part I think our designers try to achieve is, you know, working with the, the city landscaping standards, what, what is required there for the species of vegetation and, and the coverage. But I mean, our, our goal, I guess, coming into it was kind of the opposite. It wasn't, let's try to figure out the cheapest, uh, ugliest looking building and then hide it. We, we are essentially, we recognize that when city council approved this, they did it in large part because they they want a, an attractive facility there, and so the ownership got behind that and and recognized the spirit and intent of that. And so, so I think I think to answer your question, yes, there is some screening that's done out front. I I have not been as involved in this, the particular species and the design elements that that our design team and the city staff worked through on that. But I, I know what they were trying to do is essentially accomplish the same same standards that would be applied on any type of project like this, but but recognizing that. You know, our, our overall goal is is not so much to mask the building as it is just to keep the, the overall design consistent with what the city's trying to, to achieve. Would you be willing to work with staff in terms of developing this a little bit further uh, to give a sense that there is a, 
there's a, a horizontal plane that breaks up the massing of the parking lot uh, to give it more of a sense of, uh, well, the, the, the horizontal line of uh, the requirements by the city. Sure. Uh, so if I'm tracking what you're saying, you're, you're talking about um, you would be exploring putting some of the landscaping actually inside, like, uh, I don't know if there'd be room for um, um, like a median or something in there to break up the, when you're saying horizontal line, to me, that's like, that would, you'd be saying more of an east-west direction as opposed to north-south. Yeah, that was what I was thinking along Army Post Road, but I would leave the design up or the suggestions to you and the city to work that out. Yeah, I think we're, I mean, our, our, our flexibility is in working around whatever we can do to keep the parking lot up front. So if that means revising a, a landscaping plan that, that would be more acceptable or, or attractive, um, I, 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 we haven't discussed that specifically, but I, I know our primary goal is keeping that parking lot up front. And if, and if to do that means we, we, we need to get more creative on the landscaping, the short answer is a, a resounding yes. Thank you, uh, commissioners. Is there any further discussion or anybody uh, wish to make a motion? Chair, if, um, I, I do have an answer for, for uh, Johnny's question. There is a there is a project I don't uh, that was a site plan that was approved for 1960 East Army Post Road for a Hindu community center. Uh, so this is just a little bit to the east of here where they did um, the building is shown on the site plan as being it's not at the property line it is set back but the parking is to the side and the rear. So I, I don't know if that's what Johnny was uh, the information he was looking for but I wanted to make sure I provided that. Thank you, Jason. Yes, thank you, Jason. Hello. Madam Chair, Madam Chair, this is Rocky. Um, this, you know, this section of Army Post Road is is needed revitalization for so long, and I think the applicants' um, rational, logical in their presentation for the request. So, with that, I would make a motion to approve the top Type Two design, and then also uh, staff recommendation on the approval of the public hearing site plan. Okay, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Madam Chair Rocky, would you go with a friendly amendment to include a discussion about the landscaping along Army Post Road that we discussed just now and the applicant agreed to? Yeah, well, I don't have a problem with that. Jason, correct me here. On the public hearing site plan subject compliance with all administrative comments, does that cover what Will's asking? We could incorporate that. I guess um, I might just ask for a little more detail um if, I, if you don't if you don't mind if let me ask will are you thinking like maybe a knee wall or something that provides kind of a, um a frame or an edge closer to the street that kind of mimics having you know that would also shield like cars behind it like that sort of thing or just or maybe like denser planning they're like a hedge so it's well, kind I of a yeah, yeah, I was thinking something uh, low, like a hedge, but that would kind of give a definition of what the line of the building otherwise might be, or the suggestion of that, just so that when people drive past, um, they don't see just this expanse of a parking lot sat, uh, flat surface, which is really, you know, kind of not what we want in an urban design. So that was my thinking. Okay, I th I can work with that. I just wanted to make sure I understood that, but I also want to make sure the applicant left understanding what we we're talking about. I I thought I knew what you meant, but I wasn't sure they would. Thank you. But we can incorporate that into our staff review. Great, thank you, Jason. Well, there's a motion. Uh, any further discussion? If not, we'll take a vote on the motion. Emily Webb. Yes. Dory Bryles. Yes. Jan Freed. Oh, Jan, I still can't hear you. 
Hand raised works. Thank you. <laughs> Kayla Berkson. Yes. Lisa Howard. Steve Wallace. Yes. Carolyn Jennison. Yes. Francis Bogust has left us. Greg Wadier. Yes. Chris Draper. Abstain. I'm sorry. May I abstain on this or no? Yes. I'm sorry. I, I didn't hear you. Yes, you may. Abby Chungus. Rocky Spazzato. Yes. Will Page. Yes. Johnny Alcivar. Yes. Todd Garner. Yes. Motion carries. 1101. Thank you, Glory. Uh, and now at this time, I believe Jason has a report for us. Yeah, I think it's exciting. Um, we are returning to in-person meetings. So ho hopefully that is something that you all will view as a positive. I mean, there's been a lot of perks to these electronic meetings, but we are not expecting the governor to extend her proclamation um, past the, the current one, which expires on July 25th. Um, as you will recall, there was originally we we're going to expire about a month ago, but it just did get extended. But uh, I'm not anticipating that that happen again. We are moving forward with um, intending to meet in person. Uh, Posting agenda is going to do notices for in person meeting for August 5th. We will be back at the Municipal Service Center for, um, where we've previously met when we were meeting in person. Um, be happy to answer your questions you might have about that, but I just wanted to put that on your radar. Thank you, Jason, and thanks to you and all the staff for all the extra work with making these uh, Zoom meetings possible. Thank you. Well, at this time then, uh, our, unless commissioners, anyone wants, wish to make any other statements, uh, is there a motion to adjourn? This is Emily Webb. I'll move. Thank you, Emily. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.